This film contains discussions about cancer diagnosis and treatment in young people. I put this TikTok out and it ended up getting over a million likes. There's one video that has over 30 million views. Turned to the mirror in my hallway and there was a tennis ball sized lump in my throat. Oh, like, I have got cancer. Like, this is, this is real. And she was like, yeah, you have. Everything I knew just ended. I don't know at what point I just didn't want to sit in the sadness anymore. How lucky are we to have on board and feel very, very grateful. I'm Shell, uh, I'm 23 and I live in Essex. I'm a film and TV graduate and social media content creator. I was in my second year of university. I went to University of Hertfordshire and it was all pretty normal. I went away for summer and <laughs> didn't go back. One day my girlfriend came over to my house and I opened the door up and her first words to me were, you look like a man. And I was very offended by that. And she was like, no, seriously, you've got an Adam's apple. I'm like, what are you talking about? And I turned to the mirror in my hallway and there was a tennis ball sized lump in my throat. And I had absolutely no idea how I'd failed to see it. Because when I looked back on photos, it had actually been there for a good six months. Then I went to a thyroid specialist because we really didn't think it was going to be anything serious. I'd never been sick before, like I didn't even really get a cold. The thyroid specialist said to me about, oh, it could be lymphoma. It was like that. And then it took me about five minutes to actually go to him, so what is lymphoma? And he was like, it's cancer. I was like, oh. I ended up getting diagnosed with stage four non-Hodgkin lymphoma. I really, I didn't believe it at first. And I left the room and a nurse actually pulled me aside and was like, okay, so here are the leaflets that you need if you want to get in contact with us. And I just said to her like, oh, like, I have got cancer. Like, this is, this is real. And she was like, yeah, you have. Everything I knew just ended in that moment and, you know, everything changed. So I was meant to be moving to California the week before my diagnosis um, and obviously that couldn't go ahead. Uh, and then I did a buttload of treatment instead. Initially when I got diagnosed, I very much felt like, oh, like, woe is me, this is awful, why is this happening to me, do I, do I deserve this? I felt really sorry for myself at first because I was so gutted that all my dreams of like moving to America and studying film had been taken away from me. I was very bitter about it. I don't know at what point I just, I just felt like I didn't want to sit in the sadness anymore. On my second diagnosis, I decided to make a YouTube channel which was documenting um, my journey with CAR T cell therapy. Again, I've only spoken to my doctor about this a few hours ago, but this is like a trial uh, immunotherapy, I think. At the time, CAR T therapy was very new. And it sucks that I've got to do this treatment, but I'm getting to do this treatment as one of the first people in the country. I have the opportunity to show people what it's really like and give this authentic view of cancer and cancer treatments. Hey guys, just wanted to do a very quick update today because I'm a bit of a miserable git. Um, I think just the concoction of all the like steroids and drugs, they just really give you mood swings, which I'm not appreciating right now. When I posted that video, the first one, I was so like down and the response built me up and I ended up doing the second video and I was laughing. Well, all right, boys and girls, I guess that wraps it up for this vlog. Uh, but seriously, thank you so much for all the like positive comments. The support was just crazy and <laughs> I didn't expect to get upset with this. Maybe that was one of the moments that I decided that I wanted to be positive. <laughs> Did you know you were gonna stay looking like an absolute spice even with a bald head? Yes. 100%. Right, there's getting a haircut and there's looking up the scrotum. <laughs> like, what? Hollyoaks got in contact with me via Teenage Cancer Trust. With their storylines, they try and speak to people to be as, like, well-informed as possible, um, which I think is fantastic, because we need that representation on screen and it's so important to get it right. We need you to have a biopsy. A biopsy? For what? Cancer. I'm very excited to meet you. 
I am so excited to meet Shell today. I mean, I've been very lucky to be on a couple Zoom calls where Shell's been involved and been talking about her experiences and her story and seeing how we can incorporate that into the story that we're telling. But I've never met her in person, so I'm really excited to see her and have a chat um, and just get to know her. I really am grateful to be able to have this conversation with you and to have you on board to help us tell this story. You've been in remission now for, was it 10 months? Yeah, about that now. Yeah, I, I mean, what's that been like? Once you get to the full diagnosis, obviously you feel a little bit like less hopeful each time. Yeah. And I kind of thought I had come to terms with that. And then it's like 10 months, I'm like, wow, like I never envisioned that it would actually go on for this long and I hope, yeah. you know, it's forever. But I think the first relapse was somewhat easier than some of the later ones because I'd only actually been in remission for a month and then it came back. So it was almost like I hadn't got my life back yet. But after I did CAR T therapy and I was in remission for eight months, I started feeling like a normal person again. And I was like, okay, I can really like have my life back. I was still planning on going to California. I actually reapplied because I literally put in the visa and all that. And then they were like, it's back. I've got nothing good to say, I can't lie to you, but anyway. That's why I always have my guard up a little bit. The further you get into remission, the more of your life you get back, the more human you feel, the more you have to lose. So your support system in that time, did your girlfriend, is she called Hannah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hannah, was she like living with you? Like were you living at home? Yeah. So she basically came and moved in with me and was looking after me for the whole time. My girlfriend Hannah has been absolutely fantastic. Everyone always asks me actually how I stay positive and I always say it's because of Hannah. You know, she, she's dealt with everything from like cooking and looking after me, getting me changed, pushing me around in my wheelchair, making sure I've got everything that I need. I love you. You know, things for enjoyment as well, making sure that I still had a good quality of life. She was always doing things for me to make me smile and surprising me. <laughs> so on my 21st birthday, I had to go to radiotherapy and I was in a hell of a lot of pain. Um, <laughs> it was not fun and I wasn't looking forward to it. And when I got home, she had decorated the whole outside as a fun fair absolutely smashed it out of the park. Another thing that I wanted to talk about was the TikTok. <laughs> it was so strange when I found out that like you were helping with the story, I, I was like, I remember. Recognize <laughs> Where did I recognise that name from? And I've been watching your I TikToks for that. ages. How, how, how did that come about? So it was my dad's idea, actually. I can't take credit for this. He was, <laughs> like, he literally brought some Cocoa Pops into the hospital and he was like, if you're not going to eat them, because I couldn't eat at the time, my mouth was in so much pain, he was like, can I stick them to your head? It was born out of boredom of being in the, uh, being in the hospital for so long. He got about two minutes into it and then wanted to quit. My, my boredom threshold is quite low, so I had the idea. We started sticking things on and, yes, I gave up after about... Uh, Two or three minutes. Hannah took over and she's a proper perfectionist. And I put this TikTok out and it ended up getting like over a million likes. It had the craziest response and people just started putting in their suggestions and like we were trying to get through as many of them as possible. I was exhausted by the end of it. Not me, <laughs> Hannah actually. <laughs> Hannah was the one sticking them and she'd be like, oh my god, not get you should have seen her face when I was like, Hannah, we've got we've got to do sprinkles tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that was it, that was the final straw. She could deal with the cancer, but she was like, enough of the sprinkles. <laughs> it went absolutely mental. I think there's, there's one video that has over 30 million views. I think the first silly thing I ever actually did with my hair, I painted myself as a Christmas bauble. And that was like, it had like an inkling of like what, what this thing could be. Strawberry laces. I really like that one. <laughs> Strawberry laces is a personal favourite. I think favorite, yeah. mine was the, is it the Diamante things? That was stunning, and but the effect looked as if it was fake. For her and Hannah to spend five or six or seven hours on the creations is what is unbelievable. Guys, I'm just going for a little walk with my loo look. <laughs> and it is raining a bit, so at least they're getting fed. I absolutely love how the flower and the temporary tattoo hairstyles came out, though, because I feel like they were very, like, Editorial. 
for ages I'd been thinking of a way that I wanted to give back to Teenage Cancer Trust because they have supported me through so much of my treatment. And I thought, oh my God, like free real estate. I can sell these and get people to donate by sticking stuff to my head. <laughs> A little twist in action. Twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it. I need more rapid pats. <laughs> more rapid pats? Do you want me to slap your head? I did a Newsbeat interview. Apparently, after they listened to the Newsbeat, someone phoned up and donated £30,000. You might think that the things you do or put out there are not doing anything for anyone. Like, oh, why should I talk about my hair loss? Why should I talk about cancer? Why should I do this? but you could have such a huge impact on people and you have no idea. It feels really cool to think that three years ago, it was my biggest fear to lose my hair and the first ever thought that I had when I got diagnosed. And now, when it grows back over two millimetres, I might get the clips out. People, like, a lot of the time say to me, like, how do you stay positive all the time? Like, that's definitely not the case. Obviously, I'm depressed. I'm a 21-year-old who spent the past year of her life receiving, like, 800 different cancer treatments. That goes without saying, my darling. TikTok actually did help me so much. Like, I know people like to be like, oh, social media is, you know, this void and, like, really, like, meaningless and surface level, but it doesn't have to be. And suddenly, you have a bad day, and my instinct changed from being, oh God, this is, this is so crap, to, okay, how could I spin this into a funny story time? How could I share this with people and say, mm -hmm. look how awful this is and we'll have a laugh? And all of a sudden, everything that happens, you start being like, okay, there's a positive for this. Like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go laugh about it with, with my friends online. I wanted to know, like, how did you feel when you found out your character? was gonna go through that. I was immediately like, oh, this is a big story. And then a millisecond later, it was like, oh, this is a heavy story. Mm. This is a real story and this is an important story. I'm waiting for a biopsy result. They think it might be cancer. I want to do it right, and I feel like everybody is working really hard to make sure mm. that that happens. It was so lovely to see when I even got asked to talk to the team about it, I was like, it's so amazing that they actually go that extra mile. It's like they really, really care about getting it right and being an accurate representation, and that is so important because it will make a huge impact. People, people seeing that storyline, you know, maybe people will be able to spot the symptoms earlier. Um, it really is fantastic. Juliet's diagnosis scene has just come out. Mm -hmm. Would you like to watch? Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's the verdict? You have Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay. What does that mean? <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it's not, I feel the little shake when you do the little like, shake. Oh god, I feel that. It's a lot. <laughs> it's just seeing like how scared she is. Because you realise in that moment that your whole life is going to change. I could feel like the panic like in your eyes. Smashed it, babes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That means so much. Thank you. Oh. We've just finished meeting Shell. How lucky are we to have her on board and how lucky am I to have been able to spend the afternoon with her and have those conversations. I feel very, very grateful. Through this diagnosis, I've also found a hell of a lot of self-love and it has changed everything in my life, my perspective. You know, just the way I carry myself is different and it's something that I had to go through. I had to go through this journey with cancer to get to where I am. I think the advice that I would give is remember that you are still a human being and you're still allowed to seek joy and be happy. You know, cancer will try and take everything away from you and it will if you let it. So, you know, don't, don't forget about the things that make you you, the things that make you laugh and smile and you've just got to do that as much as physically possible, even on the days where it's really hard. For help and support on any of the issues raised, please visit channel4.com forward slash hollyoaks support.